Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in Power Systems Advanced Technology Support, IBM Europe. Now, this is part of a series of 10 killer apps for Linux on Power, particularly if you're an AIX guy, you want to try some of these open source packages on Linux on your beloved power machines. This time we'll be looking at MariaDB and we'll say a few words about MySQL as well. Now, let me make a few personal comments about MySQL and MariaDB. MySQL, of course, has been around quite a long time, um, along with uh, the rest of the Linux uh, popular software, relational database, open source. Um, it's the M in the uh, LAMP software stack, isn't it? Uh, they were maintained and uh, managed by Sun in the uh, a few years ago. And then Sun, of course, was bought by Oracle. And oh dear, a lot of the open source guys don't like Oracle at all. The, uh, the gorilla of the IT industry. So that caused a fork of the software for MySQL and it became MariaDB. Um, one of the colourful characters uh, was involved with that, working on behalf of everybody with open source, uh, renamed it to Maria. Maria happens to be the name of his daughter. Uh, but you can find that at mariadb.org. Uh, originally, when MySQL came out with 5.5, there was a 5.5 version of MariaDB based on the same source code. And that meant it was a drop-in replacement. So you could just pull out my MySQL, put in MariaDB, um, pick up the same files in the database, and off you go. No problem at all. The MariaDB we actually got fed up with the uh, the additional new features weren't coming in fast enough for them. So they now added extra function to MariaDB, um, and uh, you can get support contracts for MariaDB from there if you want. Uh, recently, IBM's been benchmarking MariaDB on uh, our Power 8 machines and got some excellent performance results. The uh, memory bandwidth and the single core, single threaded uh, power of a Power 8 processor can really benefit the database. Um, I'm not associated with any of these companies, nor the website I'm going to mention now. There's if not true, then false.com. Uh, the guys had a couple of beers when they came up with that. Um, I actually found this uh, very useful, this link in here for them installing MariaDB and getting it running. Uh, they cover Fedora, CentOS, and uh, RHEL. There's nothing similar for uh, the Suzy's and Ubuntu's of the world. Um, somebody should come up with a if false, then not true dot com website and cover those other ones but a good source of information how to get started and I followed basically their script uh, for the rest of this movie now if we were installing onto uh, SLES 11 um, then you'll find that on the media you don't have MariaDB they still have uh, the MySQL that's because SLES 11.3 came out three or four years ago if you look at the uh, Red Hat uh, 6 you'll see the similar sort of thing if you look at the latest versions the Red Hat 7s and the uh, SUSE 12s uh, then you'll find that they've moved away from MySQL to MariaDB now, the, um, if you install it on uh, SLES 11, then you'll run these two commands at the bottom to here, service MySQL start, that actually start the database, it runs in the background as a, a daemon, um, and then if you want to make that um, reboot and start up the database every time, then you use this uh, change config command down the bottom. If you're doing it on uh, Fedora or Red Hat, then um, we we'll use the uh, the yum command, and I'll show you that in a second. Hi, I'm on my Linux on power box. Let's look at the CPU info. We can see it's full power 8, uh, just under 4 gigahertz, and this is IBM Gobbledygook for an S824. At least you can see the 4 and the 2 in the wrong way. It's a hint. Actually, it says P series, which is garbage. We haven't called them P series for about five years, but it's close enough. Um, then let's look at uh, Flat etc. Start ease. This will pick up all files ending in release. And uh, we'll see here we're Enterprise 7. So this is the big Indian version. Clear the deck. A yum install of MariaDB and MariaDB server. Okay, so we'll click yes for that. Uh, and this is all coming off the um, distribution DVD. So it's. Uh, all they're part of the operating system. Okay, nice and quick. Clear the screen and we'll do a quick uh, check of what's actually uh, brought in. There we go. Got a couple of files, libraries, the actual utilities, and the actual server. Excellent. 
usually with databases I'm familiar with Oracle and you do things like starting the database up via a script but it runs as a utility if you like here so system control start MariaDB service so that started it up if I want to uh, do that again um, every time I re reboot then we do an enable as well okay and we'll clear the screen let's do a, a listing of user bin mysql and a star we'll find we've got a whole bunch of things in here the first one i want to point out is this one in here secure installation i think by default it installs it um low security with a test database and you can then have a quick hack around that but if you want to make it more uh, server like <laughs> or something you want to use in a secure way then uh, then we run this uh, script now if you read this very carefully you work out that this root password is the root password for the Maria database and I haven't set that so we enter space for now do I want to set a root password uh, yes I do I'll do that now very confusing the first time I've been through here well in fact it's very confusing every time I've been through here to rework that out sorry they don't match okay that's my fault pay more attention okay uh, remove anonymous users uh, yes I think that's good disallow root login remotely uh, that's up to you again um, yes I'll do that I'm doing it locally um, remove the test database and access to it yep sounds good Reload privilege table now. I have no idea what that means, but why not? Okay, now we're a much more secure environment. Now it feels a little bit odd. We're going to use the MySQL command line interpreter to talk to the Maria database uh, backend. The minus P, I think, means prompt for password, so I'll do that now. Okay, and we can see now we're talking to the Maria uh, backend. I usually get uh, particularly stuck in here, but we can do things like show database as and uh, typical SQL likes uh, semicolons at the end. And so we can see we have a, a couple of schemas and a MySQL database. Um, we could uh, do uh, connect to a particular database. And we connected OK. And we can do something like show tables. And we can see we have a bunch of tables in here. OK. Um, one other thing is that uh, particularly useful and tricky to remember or find is if you want to have your commands in a script and then just run them, the way you do that is you use the source and then you put in your file name in here and a semicolon so if that's full of um, SQL statements or data definition t statements like create table or create index um, then that's how you actually do that finally to get out of the database uh, you can use the quit command and you're back to the shell prompt okay I'm in slash root not a particularly good place to download files to but it will do for this little example I'm going to use the wget to the uh, tpc.org website and I'll quickly download my little file okay then we're gonna unzip that command there we go loads of files in here and uh, they're all inside this directory. Okay, oh, it comes out dark blue, but there's a dbgen directory which has most of the things, and we have some example reference data. This is the files we've seen here for the different tables we have. So we'll go to the uh, db, dbgen directory. 
Um, okay, in here, not terribly obvious unless somebody actually shows you, is a file called dssddl. So this is the decision support database and the data definition language. Um, if we uh, quickly just have a look at the contents, we have all the create table things. Uh, that's uh, what we need to get started. There's eight tables in here. Classic database, your nation, region, part, uh, numbers, um, suppliers, uh, part supplier, uh, multi-relational data, uh, customers, orders, and line items. So that's it. So now we want to uh, create those tables into a new database. We won't use the default one. And we're going to use the uh, SQL. Okay, and we're in. Then we're going to want to actually create a new database. So create database uh, T P C H. And that's done that. Um, now we want to actually use that database. We have to connect to that specific database, TPCH. Database changed. Okay, we see sort of none has changed to the name of the database that we're connected to. Um, and then we're going to um, source that file. So we're going to source, I think it's locally, dss.dll. Fail to open that file. Yep, wrong name. Let's try again. DSS.DDL. Okay, so that's gone in. If we actually do a show tables, um, tables, we can see there they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's looking good. So now we have a created a database and we created a nice set of tables in here. Then uh, the next thing we need to do is to do some loading. Um, you, you can't practice any SQL or have a go of anything unless you've got some data in your database, and that can be quite a lot of hard work. But fortunately, with this um, benchmark database, there's lots of data in here that we can actually uh, try out. Let's uh, quit. And we go up a directory, and we have uh, Refter here. We go, there's a whole bunch of directories in here. If you go to one, it's a very small database in here. Here's all the, um, the files that make up all the uh, bulk data that we can insert. If we list a customer, there's just a couple are there. It's not so much data about the customers. Um, if we then do uh, like a, a head command on that first one there, we'll see we have uh, here we go, here's uh, customer number uh, record one, and then the customer uh, number or name in here, and then some random bytes of information in here, and we can see building and sorts of other things in here. Um, they are um, this uh, pipe symbol for the units, guys, uh, separated fields in here. So if we want to load this into the database, we have to tell the database to use this uh, pipe symbol terminated uh, columns in our data. So clear the screen again, we'll log back into the database, let's log back into the database, hopefully I can remember my password, yep, I'm in, so then we have to um, go to use uh, tpch database, and we're in, um, now, then we have to use a load data command, and this took me quite a long turn to work it all out, so I'm going to cut and paste it in here, so I'll get it right. Let's just let that run, and it loaded a hundred uh, rows in here, um, and now we can try a quick uh, SQL statement. Okay, so we're back in. Let's do a select star from customer. And I've uh, got that quite right. 
select and it's all fail because I'm not using a database. Okay, so we'll use TPCH. That looks better. We can go back up with the um, arrow keys to customer and it will say, what? Customer? Never heard of it. So if we do a select start from customer and we have to get it out, right? Customer. Um, then, oh, then it finds a hundred rows. So be careful with your uppercase and uh, lower cases in here. And we can try more of a regular um, SQL statement uh, from customer with a particular customer key of uh, two. And there we go. We find that particular customer and their delivery number if you're in America. Okay, so we've installed, we've uh, cleaned up and got some security on our test um, databases. And we've created a database and we created some tables and we've jammed a whole lot of data in there so we can start doing SQL statements. And the rest, if you like, after that starter pack is up to you. So I'll finish up with my blatant advert. You can find me here on Twitter, Mr. Enmon. Lots of my other movies in the YouTube.com Nigel A.R. Griffiths. I've got a blog, expert blog, and don't forget those two virtual user groups for AIX and for Power Systems. Very useful places to go to get lots of information. Don't forget, if you like this movie, why not click on the liked thumbs up button below.